Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody today? Here. That is an honest answer, and I like that. Honesty is good. I mean, I'm not saying that you guys who were saying great weren't being honest, but it might have been a programmed response. It happens from time to time, you know, when someone says, hey, how are you today? Good. How are you? And we're usually lying when we say good. We're just, we're just responding to whatever people say to us, right? It's that programmed response. Well, I don't want programmed responses this morning, right? I, I want us to be honest and do things a little bit different. We do things kind of different here. Anyway, so I know that you guys have been sitting down for so long that you're tired, uh, like you just need to get the blood flowing. So why don't you stand because it's been so long since you stood up. And I want you to turn in your Bibles to one section of Scripture, just, just one. I'm going to be easy on you this morning. Uh, I don't want you guys, like, getting all worried or anything like that. All right? I want you to turn to Proverbs, right? Chapter 3, and then I'll give you the verses once I think that you're there. Actually, you already know where we're starting, because it's up on the, oh, the Bible Tron. All right, Proverbs chapter 3. I mean, it's good to see people pulling out Bibles, whether they're electronic. I, when I say Bibles and you guys show me your cell phone, I believe that you're looking uh, at your Bible. Man, you guys, I'm not that untrusting. I know that you have a Bible because, hey, look, I even have my digital Bible with me here this morning. So Proverbs chapter 3, starting in verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Father God, we just thank you for this beautiful day you've given to us. Lord, we thank you that we can come and we can uh, just share in your word. We can get together. We can fellowship, Lord. I thank you for the music that we've already heard, Lord. I just pray that it has reached through into us uh, to get us motivated and excited for what it is you're going to share with us this morning. And Father God, I just thank you for this day. And I thank you for each and every person that's here. And Lord, we pray for those who are not here. Uh, Lord, those who are battling health issues, those who are battling uh, physical issues and distance issues. Lord, just be with them. Bless them this morning. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can be seated. So, for those of you who weren't here last week, we started a new series. It's called Juice. Right? We Juice. I just want to be careful that I say Juice. Because when I was talking to some of the people in the leadership team about juice series, and I said to them, we need to have a juicer, they thought I was saying juice. And it brought some confusion into the whole thing. All right? So, juice, right? Just, just so if you weren't here last week, if you were here last week, you understand what I'm talking about, right? We have, I have my whole thing set up here, right? I have my fruit. I have my cutting board, I have my knives, I have my juicer, okay? Well, so I can cut the fruit. Somebody, I was bringing the knives in earlier, and someone says, oh, no, he's lost it. It was just concerting, because everyone else around was like, huh. like, seriously, like, nobody was like, no, pastor's stable, he wouldn't, uh, so it, it hurt on the inside where band-aids won't help, but that's okay, that's all right. God is a God of forgiveness. I'm just not. No, I'm just kidding. So, juice. We live, I think you understand, in a health-crazed world. Right? I talked about this a little bit last week. We have all kinds of things that we spend our money on to be healthy. Right? Everything from, you know, moms looking at juice boxes and saying, okay, how much percent real juice? Have you ever done that? Seriously. Look at juice, and it says 100% real juice made from concentrate. Like, I've never taken an apple, looked at it, and said 100% real apple made from concentrate. It's, it's real, or it's fake, right? That's just, that's just how I look at it. But anyway, so we have juice boxes. We have, you know, juicers. Right? We have people who are uh, on an all-juice diet. We have all kinds of things, right? We, we spend money on crazy stuff to get in shape and to get healthy. How many of you have ever heard of P90X? Okay. I have a confession to make to you. Uh, 
A few years ago, I bought online P90X. Obviously, I didn't use it. Right? I'm just making that very clear. I mean, I don't think that's a shock to anybody, but I didn't use it. I, like the vast majority of people who spend however much it was to buy P90X, don't actually use it. They normally buy it, they purchase it to have it sit there and taunt them and mock them every time they're eating another piece of cake, right? And it laughs at them only for them to sell it at half price on eBay or, you know, the Uncle Henry's or Facebook, you know, uh, sales pages, right? That's pretty much what we do. Right? And, but it's not just things like that. We, we buy all kinds of crazy stuff online just so that we can be healthy. Right? Just so we can get in shape. Just so we can be vitalized. Just so we can be like, yeah, you know? And we talked about last week, sometimes people even go so far as to buy and get juiced. Meaning, like, they get on roids. Right? They buy steroids. They buy all of these things that are not good for them. Just so they can look healthy while they die on the inside. We don't want that. Right? We talked about last week, and we're going to talk about again this week, that it's important that we get to the source of the things, to the root of it, to what actually matters, which is the juice itself. And the juice comes not from concentrate, but from fruit. Right? How many of you know that? How many of you know the juice comes from fruit? That's good. That's very good. It can come from other things too. Right? There's vegetable juice and things like that. But for our purposes here, I'm, I have fruit. I don't have any vegetables with me. That's because I don't like vegetables. <laughs> My mom can verify that, right? So juice comes from fruit, right? That's not a hard thing. And in order to get juice from the fruit, what do we have to do? We squeeze it. We squish it, right? We have to do something to it. We have to alter the fruit in order to get the juice from it. So that's good. You guys are already way ahead of things. So we have the real thing. The real deal. I, wanted, I just want to just, I'm not going to tell you where I went grocery shopping, but I went grocery shopping. And I checked this out, and this is like true. Bag of potato chips, $2. Ba uh, one pomegranate, two fifty nine. Hmm. Why in the world would we have any sort of health problems? That's, that's a different subject. So the real thing costs more than fake stuff, right? You can go and get real fruit juice, 100% juice, not made from concentrate, organic, free roaming, right? Free range pomegranates, <laughs> apples or whatever, right? Cage free, whatever, whatever it is that makes you happy, right? You can get those, but they cost more. Things cost money. Right? I know when I bought P90X and when I bought other things online, not all, a lot of them I do use, but I buy them, they cost money, right? They cost. There's a cost involved to it. There's a cost involved to being healthy. There's a cost involved to not being healthy. There's a cost involved in being blessed. And there's a cost involved in not being blessed, right? Last week, I'll ask you the same question this week that I asked last week, just in case anybody here that's new, and I know there were a few new people this morning. How many of you, please listen to the entire question before you raise your hand, because you're going to look silly if you don't. How many of you here don't want God to ever bless you? Okay, good. That, that's a statistic I'm pretty comfortable with that I've, I've yet to have people be like, not me. I don't want God to bless me. But because we want to be blessed, right? So, so my, my whole goal, my whole purpose in this series, my whole purpose really in any uh, of the words I teach, is for us to be in a place where we can be blessed, where we can be in the right place at the right time, so we can be in where God wants us to be, right? That's good. So we can be blessable, so that we can be around the blesser, right? So we can do those types of things. So... Whenever I bring up the word money, it gets a funny response from people, right? I talked about money last week, right? New series, Juice, talking about money, right? We talk about giving. We talk about giving our first fruits. It's interesting because last week I was talking about Juice and getting all kind of crazy and people were laughing. I had all the pomegranate and stuff like that. And then I said, mentioned money and people went, 
What, Pastor? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Did you say money? Yes, we're going to talk about money. Again, two weeks in a row, money. I'm excited about this. You know why I'm excited about it? Because we have a problem with money. You know what the problem we have with money is? We never have enough money if money is the only thing that we ever want. Right? Isn't that true? Right? We just never have enough of it if that's the only thing that we ever want. Right? So I just want to, 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 to understand that money is important. And my job as a pastor is to teach the whole counsel of God, which means to teach about everything. Right? And that means that we can take a few weeks every couple years, because I think the last time I taught on money was a couple years ago. Right? To talk about something that is kind of important to God. You know what? Over 800 times in Scripture, money is referenced. Whenever you see the word money, uh, many times uh, the word faith is somewhere attached to it. So I thought today we'd talk about a little bit of money. Grace Bible Fellowship. That's this church, in case you didn't know. Maybe you just like strolled in because you saw a bunch of cars like, hey, let's go hang out at the word church. That you may have gathered that by the worship experience we just had. I want you to understand something. We are not going to force you to give money. We're not going to hang you upside down by your feet and shake until everything falls out. We haven't been able to get those uh, installed yet uh, because they cost money, right? I mean, if we had, anyway, it's that process. We don't have the automatic locking doors yet. Ushers can't get back there in time to put the chains on the doors. Although I've always been tempted to do what I heard a pastor say one time, which was great. When he was taking the offering, he said, I want you to reach into the pocket or purse of the person in front of you and give like you always wanted to. <laughs> That'd be good. But what we do, the things that we do have, the missionaries that we support, the outreaches that we do, the youth, the little ones that are out back, the, the lights that are on, the, um, our, the king's closet, which you know, has hundreds of people that come and we give food, well, we give food, we give clothes, we give, I mean, there was a sink here. Like, you know, everybody says, you have everything but the kitchen sink. Well, there was a sink here last week. Pedestal sink someone brought in. So we give those, that stuff to, to give away. We do things in our community, right? We, we help those who are in need. We bring the gospel to all over the world with missions trips, with the, the outreach that we do here. Outsiders, right? Our Outsiders Youth Group, they, they're awesome, right? All of those things take money, right? They, they do. And as I said last week, the vision of our church has always outpaced our checking account because that's the way it works because we don't trust in what we have. We trust in what God is able to bring in. So I thought we'd talk about, as I said, about money. As I said, people get funny when we talk about money. Money and sex are the two things that usually get the weirdest responses from people. Money people look down. Sex people are like, what? <laughs> hey, there are two things that God talks about a lot in his word. We're not going to talk about sex and money together because that's illegal. <laughs> right? I'm just bringing that out to you this morning. The goal of the talk today is juice. Right? It's juice part two. I want us to be in that place where we can be a blessing. I want us to be blessable. I want us to be able to, uh, to be taught on this and to receive this. So this is what I want you to do, right? I know some people are already a little bit, blood pressure is going up a little bit. We're talking about money, finances. I'm making you laugh a little bit to kind of try and get you to relax, but this is what I want you to do. I want you all to do yourself. You don't have to say it out loud. I want you to take a deep breath and say, money. You don't have to have it in that evil, you know, that weird, <laughs> money. Right? You don't have to have the fear of it. And then I want you to go, we're going to talk about money. You, I didn't hear anybody breathe in on that. There we go. We're going to talk about money. And then I want you to say, I'm okay with that. You guys are bad at this. <laughs> wow. It's like, okay, can, first, maybe I went too far. How many of you can breathe, Right? Let's try breathing. Okay. I know I've mentioned money, so maybe you're not able to breathe. Maybe you're like, I knew it. All he cares about is money. No, we've already talked about other things we care about. 
Just be open to receive this, all right? Just because you're hearing money don't mean you freak out. And there's a reason why I keep saying money. Because I figure eventually you're either going to pass out or you're going to hear it. Right? That's, that's my goal. I want you to be able to hear it. I want you to be able to receive it because it's something that we need to talk about. I want us to be able to understand this. Right? I want us to be able to understand the, the cycle, the God's financial economic cycle okay, of things. And, and here's how it goes. It's the first thing in this cycle we need to understand is, number one, God is the blesser. Okay? God is the blesser. I have people I hear them say all the time, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And that's good. Who doesn't want to be blessed? All of you do, because you said you'd like to be blessed. I want to be blessed too. But we need to understand where the blessings come from first. The blessing doesn't come from our boss being so gracious to give us a paycheck. It is nice that he gives us a paycheck, but usually he gives us a paycheck for what we've done for work, right? The blessing of that job comes from God. He is the blesser. There are no blessings aside from God, right? If it's not from God, it's not a blessing, right? We, we can get things from other people. We can get all kinds of stuff, but that's not a blessing. Most often, it's a curse, and it's not something we want to be part of. So, you understand, God is the blesser. To be blessed means this, to be on the receiving end of the tangible and intangible favor of God. So, when I talk about blessings, I'm not just talking about money, Okay? Money is great. The pastor who was here before me, Pastor Louis Revito, my mentor, I love him. He's in glory with the Lord right now. I got to go to his funeral, but he used to say something I used to love. He would say, money isn't everything, but it gives us options. <laughs> okay? As he comes to find in the church, it's like, he's like, great, money's not everything, but it gives us options. Right? When God blesses us, it's not just about money. The blessings are, are tangible and intangible. Intangible things are things that we can't just, like we can't touch, we can't uh, smell, we can't taste, but we know that it's a blessing from God. We know that it's a, it's a blessing. It, it's, it's something that's coming from God, but we can't just, it's not something we can sit in or drive or, or write uh, a check for. Intangible things. Those are blessings. There are also tangible things that are Blessings. If you have a, a wonderful spouse, that's a blessing. If you, have a chil if you have a child or children, that's a blessing. Those are tangible things that we can put our hands on. And sometimes the kids, we need to put our hands on them a little bit more. Just saying. <laughs> right? I've seen moms like with leashes and stuff. That's actually a pretty cool thing. You know? It's interesting because they're usually attached to like a little, I, most of them I've seen like a little monkey backpack with a leash. It's like, yeah, because the kid's a monkey. So tangible things, right? Kids, friends, but there are also tangible things like houses and cars and money and uh, shoes and all the clothing, all that stuff. Those things are all tangible things. Those are things that we can touch, we can feel, we can taste, we can eat, right? So all of those blessings come from one place. Does anybody remember to back like uh, two minutes ago, because I have my time here, about two minutes ago, I said where the blessings come from. Can anybody just quickly tell me where the blessings come from? Man, you guys are good, all right? You are good at this whole listening thing, responding back. I like it. So we, the blessings that come from God, they're in tangible and intangible forms. Money gives us the opportunity to, to bless and to be blessed in an amazing way. As I talked about last week, money is spiritual. People don't like to hear that, right? They think they come to church like, oh, man, he mentions money. That's not a spiritual thing. That's a greed thing. No. It's a spiritual thing. You know how you know it's a spiritual thing? Because the devil tries to use it to hurt people, to mislead people. If it wasn't spiritual, if it wasn't something from God, the devil wouldn't attack it. It wouldn't make any sense. But God says, he talks about money, he talks about his giving, he talks about the first fruits, he talks about blessing us through it, he talks about uh, giving and receiving, all those things. So the devil doesn't want us to get into a place where we can understand that and be okay with it. He wants to get us into a place where we stress out and freak out about it so that we don't ever receive what God wants to show us through it. And it's not just with money, it's any of the blessings, right? Why is it that the enemy attacks marriages? Because marriage is from God. Why is it that uh, the, the enemy uh, attacks, um, you know, uh, freedom? Because where you have a free volition from God. 
Why does the, the enemy come at us uh, and attack churches and church leaders to try and destroy the church? Because the church is from God. It's God's church. Jesus said, I will build my church. So he's building it. So the enemy always attacks the things that are from God. And he gets us all twisted up in our minds about those things. The way that you and I handle money affects us. And then it affects the blessings that we can be open to and the blessings that we can be to other people. It affects us. And we have to be ready for that. Yet so many people trust God for things like forgiveness. We trust God for eternity. We trust God for healing. We trust God for all of these things. But when it comes to finances or money or giving, we don't trust God anymore. As I said last week, we are all about like, mine. <laughs> right? All mine. I've earned all of these things. They're all blessings from God. Sometimes like some of these things, right? We talked about like the pomegranate last week. Talked about it being like the financial thing, right? The apple is maybe like our spouses, right? The apple of our eye. I don't know what a papaya would be. Yeah, besides delicious, I mean, maybe the papaya is um, things. <clears throat> I didn't prepare that one very good in my notes, sorry. <laughs> but we get all obsessed, right? The lemons are definitely like our friends because they give us like a sour look on our face a lot, right? So we have all of these things. And when God starts talking about them, especially when God starts talking about giving them away or giving them back to him, we don't trust him anymore. We're like, God, I thought we were close. We were like this. We're, we're bros. Until you started talking about me giving away my money, my money, my gifts. No. God is the blesser. He gives us so that we can bless others. Here's what I discovered a long time ago. I'm not super old. I'm only 38. But I did discover this a long time ago. I don't own anything. I really don't. You know how I know this? Because I've done a lot of funerals. Not one time has I, have I been to a funeral where there was a U-Haul hooked up to the hearse with all the person's things that they're taking with them. I have never seen a, uh, anybody put a safe with all their money in their casket when they're going to the ground. I just haven't seen that. Right? We don't own anything. I don't own anything. Because here's the thing. No matter what I possess, all of those things that I have, the moment that I'm gone, the moment that my heart stops beating, the moment I stop, I take my last breath here and take my first breath there, guess what? That stuff now doesn't belong to me. It belongs to someone else. Right? Now someone else gets to enjoy the things that I have. And whoever that person that gets them, when they pass away, guess what? They don't get to bring it with them either. It goes on to somebody else. Right? That's why we keep, you know, that's why we have to have wills and all these things of, you know, I bequeath to so-and-so my, you know, juicer. Right? It's because we don't own anything. God owns everything. Isn't that weird? We can take what we have and we can invest it into something we can take with us. That sounds a little weird, but let me explain it to you. What we invest into with our time, with our talents, and with our treasures, when I mean treasure, I mean money. Time, obviously, I mean our time serving. Our talents, the things that God has given us. If we invest those things into the things that God says are important. If we invest those things into eternity, then they get to come with us. Not in those physical things, but in the blessings that come from it, in the rewards that come from it, in the times that we were saying before God, and God says, you are faithful when I told you to give of your time and your talent and your treasures. You are faithful in that. Right? Well, we even see the story that Jesus shares about, right? Uh, with the, the, the servants, right? They, he gives them all their talents, and one of them has his talent, and he doesn't, he's like, man, I'm afraid. I'm not going to do anything with this. And God is like, what is wrong with you? Right? Like, why? You know, the master comes back. The master's like, well, what did you do with it? I buried it so that nobody else could get it. Because I knew if I lost it, I was going to be in trouble. 
And the master's like, no, I gave it to you to invest. I gave it to you. The other two invested it, right? They invested it in things. And, and when the master came back, he said to them, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. You were faithful in the little things. I will now make you the overseer of more things, right? So God says, I want you to, to get into that cycle. I want you to understand that they're from me. It's not from you. All right, we invest in the things, uh, the, into the entity, the things that are going there, the church, right? The only thing Jesus ever built that we are aware of from Scripture is that he built the church. He wants us to invest in that. All right, remember last week I uh, took all of our, I took a bunch of pomegranates and I laid them all out across here. All right, anybody remember that? That's right, good, Yes. I know. that I was thinking it. I was like, he went to Madomic too. I love it. Oh, man. I don't even know. How, how many do we have here? Uh, we practice again. One. Okay, we haven't got to ten. I went to Madomic too. And I even knew that. Oh, we, we got to get, well, let's, yeah. We got to get a lime in here because a lime represents something else, I guess. All right. Nine, ten. We'll start with a pomegranate, we'll end with a pomegranate. Right? We talked about these things. This represents all of our wealth. We have financial wealth, right? We have family, we have friends, we have things, we have limes. <laughs> all of these things, right? It represents all of our wealth. Now, what did we say about the first? The first is God's. God's o God always has his portion, right? When God says his portion, right? we, we saw it in the Garden of Eden, right? God said you can have of all of the trees but the one, his portion, right? We see it through Scripture when it talks about the tithe, when we bring in our first fruits, right? The first fruits are always, they, is the best fruit. We always bring in tithe. We talked about last week means a tenth, Right? 10% for those of you who are percent people, one-tenth for all of those who went to Madama last week when I said what percentage, and they said one-tenth. It's okay. The first fruit. Of all of our blessings, God says, I want the first of it all. I want the first of your time. I want the first of your talents. I want the first of your treasures. He said, I want the first of all those things, the first fruits he says, I want you to, to have those first fruits. He said, take those first fruits. I'm giving them to you. All right? Here's where the knife comes in. Right? He gives us the ten. He says, listen, th this is it. We take that first tenth of whatever it is, right? Our, our finances, our things, right? And then... Cut into him. <laughs> Looks like a potato. It's not a potato. Right? When we do this, when we cut into those things, does anybody know what this is? Very good, right? See the stone? It's the thing. What if we were to do something, if we were to invest, say if we were to plant this into something, not in there because those are fake, what would happen? What? Come on you would grow more. Isn't that an amazing thing? So when we go to God and we take the first fruit and we give it to God, God then takes it and he cuts it and he gives us the seeds and he uses those seeds Right? He uses those seeds in there and he plants them. So does anybody know what comes from seeds? The plant, right? So we give God the first fruits. He cuts them. He plants them in those places. He plants them in the church. So we give of our first fruit. We give it to God. We say, here, Lord, here is the first fruit of my finances. God takes it from us says, thank you for giving back to me my portion. And then God takes it and he plants the seeds in it into whatever it is that we've given it into so that it can grow more 
trees. And what grows on the fruit trees? Very good. You guys got that because I said, it was because I said fruit trees, right? Because if I said trees, you guys would have been like, leaves. <laughs> I've been in this game long enough, I know, right? <laughs> fruit trees grow fruit. Jesus even said that. He told us that. And what did he say about good trees? What kind of fruit do they bring? Good fruit. And bad trees bring... Man, you guys are so sharp. You guys must have had some juice this morning because you've got this going, right? So when we do that, when we give that to God, right, we give God the gift. We bring him the first fruits, right? He takes those things. He cuts them open. We see the seeds, right? He, he takes those seeds and he plants them into whatever it is that we've given them into to grow fruit. And when we put it into, when we give God those things and he implants those seeds into eternal things, there are eternal things that happen, right? So when we give, a lot of times we're like, man, we're just giving to the church. No, we're investing in, we're giving the first fruits that God tells us, right? He tells us to, to bring all the first fruits to the storehouse, to the Lord's house, right? So that it would be full of food. But he does that, and then he uses the church to bless other people. You understand that? that we, so, we get so, so, whenever we have an issue with churches talking about money, it's always because we think it's going to the church. Yes, it's going to the church, but not, it's going to the church. The thing that Jesus says he is building. He says, I want to build and I want to be able to have enough fruit in here to be able to bless everybody around. He says, I want, he says, I want the whole community. I want your whole neighborhood. He says, I want you, everybody you work with. I want them to come and I want them to be able to eat of the fruit that you have there in your church. He said, the church that I'm building there. He said, but I can't feed them if you don't give. I can't plant seeds that aren't there. He said, you have to bring the seeds. You have to bring your first fruits of your things. And when you do that, he says, then we can get into the blessing cycle. Then we can get into my economic cycle. The first, the first part of the day goes to God. The first of our finances goes to God. The best of all we have goes to God. And then God multiplies the rest. It's the amazing thing. Right? That's the amazing thing of God. When, when we give, when we're faithful, God's not like, hey, give me 10% and I'm going to, you know, you're, you're in charge of the rest. God says, no, I want you to be a faith step. Give me the first of your fruits, the first of everything, the first of your finances. He said, and I will take care of the rest. He says it in his word. Right? He says it in his word. He says in Proverbs 3, verses 9 through 10, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Right? That's God's word. He says, give it to me. He says, I will take care of the rest. I will multiply the rest. It'll be easy. I'll take care of all of those other things. Luke 6 verse 38 says this, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure that you use it, it was the measure that it will be given to you. It's an amazing thing. God says in Malachi 3, 10, right? Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, the house of worship, and there may be food for my house, says the Lord God Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour our out so much blessings that you will not have enough room for it. So God says, try this. This is the only thing that God says that we can try him in. Try me in this. That if you won't bring their whole tithe, the whole 10%, he said, try me. If you won't do that, that I won't open up the gates of heaven and just pour out blessings onto you. So much blessings that you won't have room for it. That's not my word. That's not some, you know, gimmick that I'm trying to, to sell you. That's God's word. God's promise. If you do it, he will do this. I want you to be in a place where you can get the result. It means you have to be able to be faithful to give God what he's asked for, his first fruit. Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning, and I'm just so thankful 
for all of the things that you've given to us, Lord. I'm so thankful that we have so many blessings that come from you and from you alone. Lord, I just ask that we would not fall into the trap of the enemy, that we would see so clearly your word and your truth. And Lord, that we would realize that everything that we have, the tangible and the intangible, every blessing is from you. And Lord, you bless us so we can bless others. Lord, you, we get not to get, but we get to give. And when we give, you give more. And when you give more, Lord, lives change. And we get to see the fruit of changed lives. We get to see the fruit of the impact in our community when we just take the step of faith to give you your portion, your part. Lord, I ask this morning that each and every one of us would open up our hearts to give. Lord, that we would give as you've called us to give. Lord, that we would be free from the bondage of the, the finances, Lord, to give as you've called us to give. Lord, I pray this morning that maybe through the giving that's already been done, that someone is here this morning, Lord, who doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior. And if that's you this morning, I want you to know something. God cares about you. And he loves you far more than he's worried about money. He's worried about your soul. He's worried about spending eternity with you. He wants to have a relationship with you that's not just an eternity, but it's here and it's now and it's today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just want you to just, just pray like this with me this morning. You can pray in your, in your own heart. You can pray out loud. It doesn't matter. Just go to God and say, Lord, thank you. Father God, thank you that you gave your first fruit of your son. Lord Jesus, thank you that you came as the first fruit of the resurrection and that you died for me. That you were crushed on that cross for me. That you died and you were buried and you rose again because you love me. And Lord Jesus, this morning, I want to give you your portion of my life, which is my whole life. If you're saying that prayer this morning, would you just raise your hand? If you're just giving your life over to the Lord this morning, I just want to be able to pray for you. I just want to just be able to thank God for the, the, the blessings of that. If you've already made that commitment in your life, I want you to just go to God and say, Lord, thank you for all of the blessings. You know, take time, do some journaling, and just see all of the blessings that God's given you, the tangible and the intangible. And then just give thanks because he's so worthy of it. Father God, I thank you for this. I thank you for what you're doing in our midst. I thank you for what you're doing in our church. And Father God, I ask that you would just bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.